Mm. Let's see. Hey, look, Monica's on. Let's go to Monica. Hey, Monica. Hey, Monica. Hey, Monica. Hey, Monica. Hi again, Dirk Softpack. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. <coughs> as long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you've wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Ellipses. All right. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Oh, great. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but you do spend a lot of time with her even in the club, don't you? You know, instead of me. Yeah, I try. That's Come my on. Line. <laughs> What's that? That's my line. <laughs> <I'm Monica. laughs> then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I I'm not shy. It's just... Uh... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know what it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share... You don't. Their share of time. Here. Give me a minute. Here. Oh, jeez. Come on. And you you're can so talk pushing, to, Monica. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I I'm still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I, I get what you're saying. Well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? Sure. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. Okay. The colors, they won't stop. God, I Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaning. Noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. <coughs> Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Screw that one. Yeah. Why am I having trouble even looking at the bottom of this page? Load me. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh huh. Insert my floppy into her disk drive. Whoa! What? Oh. What? <laughs> <coughs> Flaccid. <laughs> <laughs> I am Dirk Softpeck. <coughs> Doesn't mean everything else is soft. <clears throat> ah, it's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Oh, whoops. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines, really short, makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes, asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. Oh. So, putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway... Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. 
When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is that a tip even about writing? Breaking the fourth wall! Who? What? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Oh. Ellipsis. Keep going. I'm using the restroom. Run away. from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Ooh, whoa. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. Uh, how am I supposed to write a poem about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. Uh, we have that kind of weird connection. It, it's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh, I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I'm trying to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pay Pat Sayori's head. Are you sure about that? Hmm, uh, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Dirk Softpack, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Uh, why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. It's not for you. <laughs> 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 Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. I wrote it for Monica. <laughs> uh, sigh. Are you even listening anymore? W whatever. I I'll give it to you when we get home. Really? Snap. I broke this pencil like I'll break your legs if you lie to me again. Ah. Uh... Ah, ah. I broke my pencil. <laughs> Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S s sorry It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I I am a little clumsy today. I've noticed. <laughs> like every day. Uh, let's sit down, Sayori. Y yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still didn't haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Geez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. 
each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Dawn comes, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping, I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend each and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shadows against the, it shadows against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. I think you are asking for the song inside my head. Is that right? <laughs> no, thank you. Echo. <laughs> hmm. oh, holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. You what? Well, not exactly. M maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Uh, well, never mind. I I'm thinking too hard about this. Uh, the point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Say Ori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before uh, dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. I think she'll hang on to it. Alright. Go to Yuri. Ah, is it my turn? Yes, it is. Step in line. Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. Hmm, I see. It's a bit different. <coughs> I respect you for trying different things, Dirk Softpack. Were you inspired by Natsuki's poem? Or Sayori's, perhaps? Well... I guess you could say that. I, I thought I thought so, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for you. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. I write them for myself, not for anyone else. So I don't really need for people to like them or anything. Yuri. Uh-uh. I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I would probably just do a terrible job. I... I see. I'm sorry. My stupid mind. It likes to do that sometimes. Anyway. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things that you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's like a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Uh, thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? 
Nuri nods and hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the skittering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an inordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware, a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. The moon incites its phase and reflects <coughs> that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlonian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Am I the raccoon? <laughs> Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So... I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Dirk Softpeck? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I, f I, f I feel like everyone is interrupting me every time I have a line. <laughs> and I want to stab them right in the chest. <laughs> has a little something like that. <laughs> the best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Uh, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. All right. Oh, finally, the best girl. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm waiting for her to chop my head off. Says. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at my poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? N no, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky with this one. Y yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute. I mean... I mean, well written. No, I mean... <laughs> uh, so that's how it is. My poem is cute? No. 
Why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Oh, you totally like cute things. Natsuki shoves my poem back towards me. Huh. Reading it again, I decided that it's not so great after all. <laughs> it's too cute and doki doki. I want to know what doki doki <laughs> is. What does it mean? It would only impress, <laughs> you know, girls who like those things. It makes me think of like a Girl Scout cookie. Try our doki dokis. <laughs> For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyways, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something, too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Me. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? <laughs> Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she, if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. God. Yeah, no, I don't like her at all. <laughs> it is metaphorical! <laughs> Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I'll have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anybody would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how... It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. It's about her manga. <gasps> I wrote it to be easy to relate to. The manga is the spider. Mm. She's Amy. It is metaphorical! Why is it with all these metaphors? I got a, I was the raccoon. Everyone in the has Fury some point. kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares about what somebody likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh. That's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. Uh, that people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I I guess I should try to not be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotion is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. 
Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so everybody should come to the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. <coughs> Sayori has been working with on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. P performing? P uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to have a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem and recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never... In my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember, Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. Ellipsis. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event <coughs> and each put on a good performance, it will only inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Ellipsis. Ellipsis. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Ellipsis. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Yeah. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Darn right. All right! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Ellipsis. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant face. Sigh. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N n no way! But Monica, this is too sudden. Well... If you can't recite your poem in front of the club, 
How do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off and help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! Haha, <laughs> thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. <laughs> what? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head low, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It... it's called... After Image of the Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that <laughs> she enunciates <laughs> with perfect timing. <laughs> this must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality. Whoops, there goes gravity. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> there goes gravity. Oh, that's spaghetti. <laughs> Mom's spaghetti's <laughs> dope. <laughs> and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the f first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. <laughs> <laughs> Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Ellipses. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, uh sorry I giggled. <laughs> Sayori? It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bitter. <coughs> if I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she like she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to read it's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Dirk Softpack liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you so nicely. 
but it might be that other poems wouldn't work out quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that were sort of gentle delivery would have worked well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmph. Don't make me go before Dirk Softpack. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Girls, Might as well let Dirk Softpack lower me. everyone's expectations a little bit. <laughs> everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with, but it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. <laughs> Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Wh why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Humph. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Don't do it. Actually, do it. Natsuki takes a breath. What? Once she starts <laughs> reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. Oh, dear lord. <laughs> this is how I die. <laughs> Depends on how many more times you disrespect best girl. <laughs> God. I'll just set this here. It's probably Gently. It's probably what she would <laughs> use on me, too. <clears throat> While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. <coughs> It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. He'd better not make me do that again. Ah, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean... Doing it in front of other people would be... will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. <laughs> but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki! I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure to pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. Doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all of this <coughs> effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Mm. Dang. I'm surprised they didn't go flying off the screen. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, but... everyone. I think that's about it for today. 
I know the festival is coming up, but let's write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day! Yay! I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, mm. whoa, then I'll have to do my best. Uh, ready to go, Sayori? Yep! <coughs> Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Thrix Softpack. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori? Ellipsis? Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Uh, um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Uh-huh. What would you do? Uh, what kind of question is that? It's a question you need to answer. Frick. You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> uh, still what kind walk. of decision would you yeah, make? I'll still walk home with Sayori. Sorry, Yuri. <laughs> make me sad, Newman. <laughs> Don't worry, you're Monica too, so... <laughs> We're going to see if that's even an option in this game. <laughs> <clears throat> Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh, but, but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're, You're so silly, Dirk Softpeck. Thinking that my lines are your lines. <laughs> you think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Huh? The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to, carry, to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Oh. Best Girl, Volume 3. <coughs> but now comes a question. So, I can't remember which ones were which. Did he remember to give Sayori his poem? I don't think he did. Oh, man. Ooh, snap. Duh. Uh, through childhood. So one for Sayori. Laugh. Two for Sayori. Uh, Why? Sticky is not cute. Why? Uh, mouse. Natsuki. Hey. Um, <laughs> fun. Three, one. Playground is not cute. Rage treasure flying. Let's do flying. Would you hand me the ant, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, candy? Hand me nondescript drink, please. Let's go ribbon. Let's 
Gonna be Natsuki. <laughs> she say the girl Sayori likes bittersweet also. Mm -hmm. So sad or happy right. could both be her. I feel like Bubbles will probably be Sayori. No way. That's, Tragedy that's would not be ski ready. all the way. Damn Bubbles. you, Keenan. Alright, we're trying this right now. <laughs> Oh. Damn you, Keenan! I'm trying to get him to accidentally pick Natsuki. <laughs> Haven't you picked up on that? <laughs> hmm. I gotta, I gotta protect that smile. You haven't even seen the smile yet. Party? Nope. Ah! Uh. Uh. Party. Of course. No, I think I've done pain before. Uh, God, you know, I bet you, I bet you she'd like socks. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I've steered you wrong, Newman. Darn right. You're supposed to have my back, play. Uh, joy. Family. There's no chance for best girl now. Dun, dun, dun. Get the heck away from me. Let's do... Let's do forgive. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, you're too good. You're too legit now. You're, you're too legit to quit. Darn too right. Too legit! I know too my, much it to quit. I know my girl. We've grown up together. Uh, disown. Yeah, dang. <laughs> I know her. Disown. <laughs> That's exactly what she's going to do to you when she finds out you put disown in the poem. <laughs> um, Three hmm. more. Three more chances for you to blow wit and have best girl. girl. Boop. Just because I like the word boop. Boop. <laughs> Uh, and then Shane is probably one. Kiss. Nope. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you <coughs> practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> You must have a lot of determination. You started this club and now you're picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, nice. Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Ah, uh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Uh-huh. I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by all of... You all of people? What do you mean by you people? What do you mean, you <laughs> people? Because <laughs> it's right in your name. Man Ika. Japanese translation. Eh? Uh -huh. That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Nani? Ah, <laughs> uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for today now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, 
Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. <coughs> Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I wordly glance at Sayori before I turn around back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I, I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Dirk Softpack, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she sees a seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say that I've noticed anything about her. <coughs> Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Dirk Softpeck. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Uh, sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just want to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about her well-being of the club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing she has on her mind is you, Dirk Softpack. Me? What? Hmm. How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sari talks about you more than anything else. You know? Uh... She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. W what? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has been before. <laughs> you're so funny, Dirk Softpack. Have you thought that maybe you're always seeing her like... Eh. Have you ever thought that maybe you're always seen her you've always seen her like so cheerful? Because I can't say the line. <laughs> <laughs> Reading because is hard. that because that's just how she is when she's around you. Ah, I've said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. So you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her. So try not to skip the line, dumbass. <laughs> uh, Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it. But I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up and from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. That's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her? That I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Wait for Monica, I shall. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. 
Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Hi, Dirk Softpeck. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, stop skipping my lines. <laughs> I'm sure it'll turn out great, because I won't stab you for <laughs> skipping my lines. <laughs> it would also make me happy to see... You not skip my lines. <laughs> Hi, Dirk Sawpack. Yo, Sayori. Dog, homie G. What's the word on the street? I'm born atomically. Socrates, philosophies, and hypotheses. Can't define how I be dropping these mockeries. Lyrically perform on